Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I always like to start off our Facebook Live sessions with what we're working on for So Confident for the month. And this is the first month, July, that we are actually using the Riviera shirt pattern. The Riviera shirt pattern goes back a ways for us, and it's always been one of my favorite patterns. I've made it in lots of silks and linen and cotton and so forth. And I've never varied the pattern, but of course, this is the year for So Confident where we are varying the pattern. So I'm going to show you the original as it is when you take it out of the envelope and make it. So you can see that it has two different fronts, a right front and a left front. And the left front is longer. And even though it's cut on the straight of grain, it hangs on the, on the diagonal and is connected with one button here and another button at the collar and the stand. And the back is plain, straight across the back, very dropped sleeve, dropped shoulder, and a long tapered sleeve. So we are turning this into this. And we're really excited about this for a lot of reasons. Not only the style, but the fabric as well. So you can see now that we still have the left front crossing over the right front, but now it's shorter and it's buttoned all the way down. We've changed the collar from a collar and stand to more of a stand-up collar that's cut on the bias. So we took the back and emulated that same crossover construction and um, let's see, my lefts and rights here. My left front is diagonally placed over the right front. Back. The back. Back. Oh, boy. <laughs> back, front, right, left. You know, you get the picture. You can see it. <laughs> Same sleeve, but on the left sleeve, we've added a seam so that we can do a contrasting pattern or color, whatever fabric you're using uh, on the sleeve. So we think it's pretty sharp. Our kits are made up in this fabric, which is a long panel that has four different motifs on it. And this uh, fabric was printed for us in India. So we do have a limited quantity. We have a few kits left. So if you're interested in the kit, probably ought to you know, click that uh, box. Uh, but it can be made in lots of different things, either all the same fabric or a mixture of fabrics, whatever you want to do. So from this to this is the July class. Now, the video was released last Friday, so you can sign up for the class, for the monthly class. If you are a yearly member, obviously you already have this. We have a Q&A session this Thursday at noon Central Time. I've already had a few questions, and so it's going to be a good session. And if you have more questions in terms of the prep letter, the information that we gave you, or the construction of the garment, please bring your questions to the Q&A, and we'll answer them and, and have a lot of fun. So, all right, now I'm going to bring Erin onto the scene here because she's going to explain a little issue that's going on with our um, accounts on our website. And since I know about this much and she knows about this much, she's going to tell you about it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good morning. I just wanted to come on quickly and um, let you know that we are having issues with our login system on our website. So I know a lot of you rely on logging into the website, going to your account history to find downloads, tutorials, and things like that. We are having issues, but we are working on it. We've been working on it for a while now, and we hope to get it resolved. Um, every day we say, we're going to get it resolved today, but our website manager is working really hard on it and um, going to get it fixed for us. So um, what I would do is I would just sit tight and um, not log in at the moment, um, or not to try to log in at the moment. Um, if you need anything from us, if you need a tutorial, if you need anything, um, any pattern, why don't you just go ahead and email us and, um, and we can send you those files. And um, when we get it up and running again, we'll make sure and notify everybody that it's working again. So thank you for your patience. We really appreciate it. All right. It's just amazing to me that our website is 10 years old 
And in the world of websites, that's getting a little bit on the aging side. So we are in the process of, of uh, considering new design, new whatever for the website. So this, is, this piece of this is not related to any of that particularly, but it just uh, reminds us that uh, it's probably time to rethink our website a little bit. So we'll be hearing about that more. All right, um, don't forget about our Instagram challenge. Uh, we've had some fantastic submissions already. I am so impressed. I see them on Instagram. You are posting them. Betsy is posting what you're sending to her. And they're really inventive. And um, I don't know. If you want to know about the Instagram challenge, go to our blog. And it will all be there. Is that right? Did I say yes. that correctly? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so there are rules about it. Not many. Uh, but you'll find out what, uh, what the prize is and all of that. So... I'm still looking at mine. This is uh, the inspiration. We're using the artist, um, Na uh, what is her name? Uh, Naomi Manuo, I hope it is. And you choose an image from her artwork, which is very contemporary and really fun. And you, you know, figure out what you're going to make, and you either make it or send the fabrics, uh, put together a little mood board of ideas. However you want to approach it is fine. but. Anyway, we've had lots of submissions, and they're just fantastic. So thanks for that. Last week, uh, we had a guest here, Elaine Henry from Texas, arrived at our office. And it was so much fun to see her. She's been on a couple of trips with us, and great friend and great customer. And she, just in passing, was talking about something, and it, it triggered an idea for me. I know that you have heard me talk about croquis before, and if you've read a recent article uh, that I wrote in Threads magazine about uh, inspirations and how to uh, decide what to use where, what fabrics to use on top, what fabrics to use on the bottom, uh, proportions and all of that, using a croquis, which is a, a really a sketch of a body form, is a really useful thing. So there are books of croquis. This happens to be one that I have used that I think I got off of Amazon. I can, har I can show it to you, but it's so faint to see the, the figures on it that it's almost impossible to really show it to you. Does that even show up? Um, barely. Barely. So, barely. <laughs> yeah. So, at any rate, um, Aaron put this together for me uh, a few year a couple years ago. And you can see now, I think she traced over the croquis so that we could see it. But it was it allowed me to study how I was going to use these particular fabrics, whether I wanted the stripe as pants or a stripe as a top. Do I want color on the bottom, top layer shorter than a secondary layer? It just was a great way to study. So... These are croquis. They're perfect figures. They're tall and slim and not necessarily us. So Elaine had her husband take a picture of her in probably a leotard, maybe a, a fairly tight t-shirt. And she was standing just like this. And he took a photo. And then she traced over the photo. So this is her. And I think it's a fantastic way to do the same thing to take your fabrics, sketches, whatever, and superimpose them over a croquis that's actually your shape. I'd never thought of it. She told me where she got the idea. I've sort of forgotten. It was in another class by another instructor, and maybe if she's on the call, she can say where she found the inspiration for even doing this. Uh, or maybe she made it up herself, but I kind of remember her telling me that it was something that she learned in a class someplace. So I thought it was a great idea. So, Croquis are maybe particularly important when you're talking about pants. And today we're going to talk about pants as well as some tops. But it's July in Kansas, and we are knee-deep in the middle of summer. It is hot, it is humid, and it is time to be cool and comfy and bright and cheery and feel like the sunshine and all of that. So I'm still making summer clothes. Um, I have a hard time making summer clothes in March which is when I should be thinking about it, actually. But here it is July, and I'm still thinking about what I'm going to wear for the next two or three months. So I started with uh, some pants, and I was inspired, actually, 
by Alex's Facebook Live last week where she was talking about stripes. And she had this fantastic red and white stripe and a blue stripe and an a, a orange and green stripe and all kinds of stripes. And she was talking about pants and the various styles of pants that she likes to make, Valencia's, Chesney's, Hollywood's, whatever. Well, one of my favorite pants is still the Hudson pants. And so I remembered that in Series 11, So Confident, which was last year, I believe it was the second project, so that would have been February, we introduced the Hudson pants, but we made some changes. And so let me show you the Hudson pants as we know them. I think of them as being defined by these darts that start at the bottom hem and end below the knee, and there are two in the front and two in the back. It's a side seam, no pocket, and this has a cut-on waistband, not a separate waistband, which is fine mostly. But for those of us who are higher in the back, lower in the front, or need a contoured waistband, that may not work. And so what we did for the tutorial for last February was turn those pants into this. So we added a separate waistband and we taught you in the tutorial how to determine where the waistline is on a cut on waistband. And you have to do some calculation and some thinking about that, but we have it very well spelled out in the video and also in the prep letter. So now we have a separate waistband, which I think is more comfortable perhaps for most. We've added our famous pocket, which is from our West End pants pattern. We use this pocket over and over and over again. It does have a, a bit of an opening here, so you see the pocket underneath. I'm going to show you the pocket piece in a minute. In the tutorial, we talked about matching plaids, but we also changed the bottom so that there are two bias cut pieces in the front that overlap and a separate wedge section in the back, all of which are connected at a seam, a horizontal seam about right here. So it kind of changes, uh, gives them a little kick, uh, adds some useful things as well. And so I decided to make my summer Hudson's just like the tutorial last February, or a year ago February. So I chose a railroad stripe, still staying on the Alex Woodbury stripe theme. And we have three railroad stripes. I had made a pair of railroad striped Picassos a year or two ago, and I loved them. They just go with everything. And so we got some other colors and variations of these railroad stripes in. So we have four of them here. We have this one, which is what I have on. And this is the most interesting color, really. I used to think it was gray, and then I see it as green. So it's gray-green. Uh, I don't know, it just goes with everything. This one happens to be linen with a bit of cotton in it, so it has a really nice soft feel to it. This one is linen, and this is a natural color stripe and a, an off-white, a cream and natural. This is actually natural and black, but when you combine it as a railroad stripe, it looks like gray. And then I added this, which is more of a check, although there is a striped uh, feeling to it, but it's natural and black. So those are the four pants fabrics that I think are particularly useful for, I'll call them basic, but they have this wonderful uh, uh, stripe to them that, that puts them into a little different category than just another pair of solid pants. So I did the crossover bottom, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. I think it's particularly effective on a stripe because you're cutting these two pieces on the bias. So on the front of the pants, you have this detail that's not only crossed over like this, but it is a stripe, and so the stripes are going different directions, and it's really fun. And then the back is straight up and down. So this entire section is made and then attached to the bottom of the Hudson's, which obviously have been shortened. Darts are gone. It's a totally different look for the bottom. And that's kind of what we're all about. We're, we're all about taking a pattern. Once you get the fit of any pants, and the Hudson pants 
in this case in particular, why do you want to reinvent the fitting again? So make them six times, 60 times, 16 times, whatever, and just start changing the details. And this is one detail that I think is really on trend. You see all kinds of interesting bottoms to pants, and so that's what we've done here. I'm showing you this because it, it may look a little bit difficult to make, but it's not. Uh, these pieces are, these two front pieces are pressed first with the hems pressed under, but they're not stitched yet. And then when you stitch these that are crossed over into the side seams, then you start your top stitching on a single hem layer at one of these side seams, and it's just a continuous top stitching ending up into here. And you can get to that really, really easily. So it's super easy to hem, but not individually hemmed. The whole bottom of the pants is hemmed in the round, so to speak. This is the pocket that we've added to the Hudson pants. This is from the West End pants pattern. So if you have the West Ends, you have the pocket. And we've probably got it, in, I think it's in the Chesney. It's in the same, we have it in the Chesney pants, I believe. So you can see this is the cutout. So it's one pattern piece, which is really nice because it eliminates one seam, a little bit of bulk towards the front of the pants. So by the time this is constructed and folded over, of course, this would have been attached to the front of the pants, then really all you're connecting is this bottom curve, a stitch line here, surge the bottom of that, and the pocket's ready to go. It's a nice size, not too deep, not too wide. Uh, it's wonderful. So those are the two favorite things about the um, uh, additions to the Hudson pants. This uh, idea of adding a separate waistband to an cut in all in one waistband, that is in the tutorial, but I also addressed that in a previous Facebook Live. And we do have an index for topics in previous Facebook Live, so you can look that up and you can see that as well. Okay. So, um, what do you wear with these West End pants? I'm calling them West Ends now, Hudson <laughs> pants. I think there are about three of my favorite patterns that, to me, work for what you wear with this silhouette of pants. Now, these pants may seem like they're kind of full, but they're really not. Of course, that's you know the amount of ease that you have. I have about... Uh, six, mm, four to six inches of ease, maybe five inches of ease on these pants. And that's about right for me. Um, although I was putting these on this morning and thinking, I wonder if I need to move up a size. Hmm, is it that those donuts I've been eating that my husband goes and gets on Saturday morning? I'm not really sure. But at any rate, um, I'm still wearing the same size and forcing myself to suck in my stomach and all that. But back to tops. Um, I think that for the silhouette, the tops need to be a little bit more on the shorter size, side. You know, Erin came on the camera here and she has on a, a London shirt, which is a fabulous summer shirt, but it really is just too much volume and I think too long for the Hudson pants. So I have on the splice top, which is a download pattern, and I really like it because it's airy, it's roomy, and yet it has some nice shape to it, has a real pretty neckline. I have a little necklace here. You can wear some jewelry with it. You can wear a choker kind of necklace with it. But what I like about it, it has the opportunity for some contrast in what I call the splices of the top. So I've used a linen, and I used this linen right here, 100% linen. Whenever I see these printed linens, I just go crazy for them. I just love them. They're all happy and beautiful and beautifully designed, and they feel like they're hand-painted, and I love that aspect of it. You can make the splices in the same fabric, or you can use a contrast, and I chose to use this, which is a Japanese double gauze. Now, you think of double gauzes as being a little bit thick, but these are very nice and soft and sheer. Not sheer, but uh, lightweight. I call them lightweight. So it doesn't, even though it's a different fabric, um, feels different than the primary fabric that I used, 
for the splices, it works just fine. You can use pretty much any combination of fiber, fiber content that you want for these splices. The splices are a couple of inches shorter. So this is easy to make. I, I was kind of astonished. Um, I don't really brag on the fact that I'm a fast sewer because I'm really not. But I'm a focused sewer. And I, a week ago, determined that this last Sunday was going to be my sewing day. I knew it was going to be really hot. I wasn't going to go outside much. And so I assigned myself the day to sew. And I made the Hudson pants in the morning, and I made this in the afternoon. That was after taking a break for lunch, going on one errand to the grocery store and to the bookstore. And by 4 or 4.30, I had an ensemble. And that's pretty darn good. That's how simple these are to make. The neckline of this has a facing uh, that's top stitched down. The hems are a simple deep hem that's turned using our famous tag board template method. Uh, obviously, there's two seams on each side instead of one, so okay, it takes longer to make two more seams and a simple sleeve to insert. So easy things to make. So I like the splice top. I also really like the cottage shirt. I love this shirt. I always have. Uh, it does have a collar and stand, so this is not quite as quick as the splice. I, we've put other collars on this. Uh, you could just do the stand, perhaps, if you don't really want to do the whole collar and stand thing. We have put the collar from the Now and Zen, the Zen in particular, on this shirt. But it's a nice, oversized, but short piece. And what I like mostly about it is this deep hem, which is about six inches. And that goes all the way up to the vents on the side. Again, this is in a, a linen. Uh, we don't have this particular fabric any longer, but it gives you a sense of what it looks like in a linen print. And then this is the gardenia, which is in the pattern either a top or a dress. This is obviously the top. Uh, this is not right at the shoulder. It comes over the shoulder a, a fair amount, uh, an inch or an inch and a half or so. This is a nice detail that I like that has a sewn portion for about three or four inches right here, and that creates this nice little flutter drape right there. There are pleats on this side, about three pleats here, and all of that is kind of overlapped with a tie that's cut on the bias. So I, there's a picture of me somewhere in this garment with some pants, and I just, I just love it. Again, in a linen print, we don't have this particular print anymore either, but again, what it looks like in a linen print. So that's the gardenia. I can talk about fabric, or we can take some questions. Whatever you okay. want to do. We can do some questions first. Let's actually get a full okay. shot of the pants and the top together. You want me to <laughs> be on my tiptoes? I was going to bring out a little stand to stand on, and I forgot to do it. I think we can get the full look here. Yeah. And maybe do a little turn a little so everybody turn. can see it all the way around. Okay. <laughs> see the splice. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we just had a great comment that someone wore the cottage shirt in 100 plus temperatures yesterday. So yes. That nice. is a perfect garment for that. Yeah. Okay. This sleeve could even be shorter if you chose to do that. Probably would be good looking sleeveless. I've never done that, but it could be. Can you make the same size when using a woven rather than a knit for the splice? I think so. I think it depends on the knit. If a knit is super, super tissue weight, drapey, you might go down a size. But if it's a little more stable knit, like a cotton knit or a lightweight uh, ponte or something like that, I would stay with the same size. Can you use knit for the splice and woven for the body? Absolutely. You can use woven and knit, knit and woven, any combination. Everybody loves the Hudson update. They think that's really neat. Yeah, it's fun. So again, yes, Linda's wearing the Hudson 
pants. Hudson pants. You know, I wear the Picasso pants a lot. And as much as I love the Hudson, and, and it is our most popular pattern of all time. Picasso. But not everybody loves the fuller silhouette of the leg. Well, I think with this variation of the Hudson, you get that general style of something fun going on in the bottom of the leg without the volume of the pants. They're a little slimmer. Um, there is a question about the So Confident for this month, if we want to take that. Um, it's about the Riviera. Um, is, I don't care for drop sleeves. Is there another pattern that I can use for regular inset sleeves? You know, I'll probably address some of those points on Thursday for the Q&A. Um, the answer is yes. Uh, there's also ways to narrow the Riviera, which I'm going to talk about on Thursday. Um, somebody says they love the splice, but the sleeves are too tight. Do you have any advice for that? The sleeves are too tight? Yes. Yes. Uh, it depends on where they're too tight. If they're too tight in the upper arm, then there's the classic um, slash and spread to get more girth. If you need more circumference, then you can probably start at the zero point of the sleeve and just bring it out. So I think it depends on where it's too tight, but definitely in our fitting book uh, encyclopedia and in our workbook, and you'll find this technique in a lot of places. Just look up increasing the girth of a sleeve, and that's what I would do to it. And that doesn't change the circumference of the uh, sleeve cap to the circumference of the arm high, arm high, <laughs> arm high. <laughs> okay, that's it for questions okay. right now. Great. So I've put together some combinations here, thinking splice, but of course we can consider gardenias and cottages as well. So I've already talked about this. This is the fabric, the, the linen and cotton for the pants. This is my splice, and these are my splices. Of course, this would make a beautiful cottage shirt. This would make a beautiful gardenia, either one of these by themselves. For this one, I chose a more geometric pattern to use. And I thought that using this white that has this small geometric dotted motif would be a great splice. But you know, that would make a great summer white shirt. Just that one alternative to a pure white shirt. A white that has a little something going on with it make a great shirt. But it's fun to use these two different patterns. You know, the small dots of this have a relationship to the larger dots of this one. Both of these are all cotton, which is always very cool for summer. So for this one, which reads as gray, kind of has a bluish cast to it, probably doesn't really, but I see it sometimes, uh, I chose this linen print, which is just beautiful. I see this as rocks and water and some vegetation and just a really some natural forms. And this is linen. And this cotton is a really unusual piece. With, I think uh, it might help if I open this up and you get to see it. I think it's pinned together here. Get this off of here. And this would make a fun shirt on its own as well. But I also like it as the splices for the linen. This is harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> there we go. That color. That's beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really pretty. And it's quite inexpensive. Um, Retails for $16 a yard. That's, for us, it's pretty inexpensive. This all-natural one, I love this contemporary Nanny Eero Japanese linen. If you like this, you probably ought to order it. There's not tons of it left, and we can't get more. But these beautiful fuchsias and lemon yellows and natural. And there's a peach color in here. It's just beautiful. So I chose another... Uh, it's, it's in the same family as the icy greenman over there, but this natural, uh, almost hand-dyed looking double gauze for the splices. 
but I like it also just as a, a shirt as well. So just because I've said splices doesn't mean you can't use that fabric as a shirt as well. So those are the fabrics. All right, I might get a close-up of okay. all these, especially the stripes, which I think are yeah. re not reading as well. Yeah, this stripe camera. is about an eighth of an inch wide, and it's an even stripe. So for the back of the Hudson's, where there's the horizontal seam near the bottom, I did match the stripes. It's pretty easy to do. Even if you don't think about it when you cut it out, you can shift it an eighth of an inch, and you know that's not going to be the worst thing that ever happened to you. So that one's about an eighth of an inch. This one is slightly narrower. You can see how drape, drapey these are. These have already been laundered. I did wash the linens again and dried them. So when I now wash the Hudson's, I'll just wash them and I won't dry them. But this stripe is a little narrower. But again, an even stripe. Didn't worry about side seams. Just cut them out. And then this one is more like this one, but again, it's, a it's not an even stripe. The dark stripe is a little bit narrower than the space in between, but again, easy to match. And with the cotton in here, this has a little different feel than these, but same drape, same beauty. And this one, there's definitely a horizontal, darker colored, natural thread going through there. So it's a vertical stripe, but with a little bit of a horizontal line reading through it. So it comes off as a small check or plaid. I love that one for just a good neutral, mm -hmm. a little added interest. Right. Okay. <laughs> we need rollers this on This is a our... balancing act whenever I do this. <laughs> Yeah. I always feel like it's surely they make uh, tripods with rollers. <laughs> or something is going to just yeah. one of these days the phone is just going to lay flat on its face. Okay, would you consider doing an entire live on using gauze pattern choices, sewing tips, and etc. On using double gauze? Mm -hmm. Sure, we don't have a ton of them. Um, I can pretty much answer that question right now. Um, I don't know that there's any particular isolated technique about sewing double gauze. I would use cotton thread, 70 needle, standard seam finishes, my machine's going to behave on it. Now, there are some double gauzes out there, I know maybe what you're thinking, that are a little different character than what we carry, and they're a little more shreddy. Um, transparent, maybe trickier to sew. We don't carry those, so I haven't had experience with those, sewing those. But yeah, I, I can, that would be something I can add to my list to talk about in more depth. So the Hudson pants, are they the same pants as the original printed top and pants pattern? Yes, if you have the printed top and pants, they're the same pants with the variations from that tutorial. Yes, we have not changed the Hudson pants. So now the Hudson pants are a download only, and the top is not included in the download uh, version. So can you point out the, um, the has a green cast, the stripe with the green cast, which one that is? Yeah, this is the one that I, I that's why I chose this fabric that has quite a bit of mixed greens in it, and I thought that it pulled out that green uh, mm -hmm. between the two of them. And that's what you're wearing. And that's what I'm wearing, yes. You know, I look at it, though, with this, which is purely black and white, and I think it looks good. So, you know, I don't know. But I see green in it. it there's definitely a green cast. Okay. I don't see any other questions right now. Okay. Very good. Um, all right. So... The items on sale today are the Hudson Pants pattern, which is digital, and you know that you can ask us to print that for you. That's another, um, well. It's like it's a choice. It's a choice when you buy the product for right. us to print it. Right. Or you can print it yourself or send it to another uh, place to have it printed. Uh, so the Hudson Pants, the splice top, 
the gardenia top and dress, you get both in the digital, and the cottage. Now the cottage is both printed and digital. Gardenia is digital, Splice is digital, and Hudson's are digital. Am I right about that? Yeah. And then this tutorial that I've been talking about, which I was reviewing what we did in that tutorial. That was a really good tutorial because it had a lot to do with fitting and measuring and how to make all the changes to turn the Hudson into this new version of the Hudson with the separate waistband, the pocket, and the bottom detail. So it's a nice lengthy video and, uh, and supplementary uh, download material. So that is on sale. That's So Confident Series 11 um, Hudson Pants Variation. We have a couple of uh, smaller tutorials that are always useful to have in your library. We have one called Loops and Tubes, how to make tubes like this, the various techniques. There are several. There are several um, devices that you can use to make tubes like this. And also five narrow hems. So there are various ways to do turned hems, surged and turned, baby hems, and that's a good one. Those are nice basic tutorials to just have in your library so that when you need them, you can refer to them. They're, those are the kind of tutorials you can print off, keep them in a three ring notebook, a volume of skill building techniques. I don't see any okay. other questions. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. You know, I'm looking at something right here before I sign off. Oh. This was just sitting here on the table. And what struck me about this particular photo by Naomi Manuo are the colors of the green <clears throat> and the blue. Here we go, right here, a contemporary fabric. I was thinking, uh, because of this chest of drawers behind it with the segments, I was really thinking about using the crossroads because it has the seg segmented uh, sections in the front of the garment. So, um, hmm, we'll see. Nice. Yeah, I know, that was just sitting there. That's funny how that happens, I found. You know, you can be stuck, and then you go down to your sewing room or up to your sewing room or wherever, and three things are lying around, and, I'll, and you go, oh, well, those go together. I didn't know that. It just happens. Okay. <laughs> can you that, say what um, size you're wearing in this flight? I'm wearing a small in this. Um, when I filmed the tutorial a couple of weeks ago, I was wearing a medium. I can wear a medium. So. <laughs> okay. I can, it's like shoes. You can wear any size you like. There you I, don't go. Know about that. <laughs> I used to work in a shoe store and when I was uh, in high school and college, and that is a fact. Women at the time, I don't think that's so true anymore because we're into comfort, but if, you, they, if they like the shoes, they'd take any size. <laughs> Okay. All right, so, so I do one more. What is the challenge deadline? Uh, the end of July, July 31st. Okay, yeah, now okay. I think we're done. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next week.